Lance, I think you mentioned this after the uh, the SEC meet, but that was the first time you all had beaten Texas and, and LSU. And I guess are those the main? Is that the main competition here at the regional? Yes, two of us out of the basically four, Tulane would be added to that formula. Um, so two of us will advance automatically. And then I think Tulane might have enough points uh, via the season to possibly uh, be eligible uh, as an at-large uh, team. But I don't think LSU ourselves or uh, Texas have enough scalps to – be able to advance. So I know in, in past years, a lot of times it hadn't been unusual for Arkansas to go in as a heavy favorite, maybe rest some runners and just kind of use it as a warm up, tune up, whatever for nationals. I, I assume that's not the case this year. What, what, what's your all's approach? Those were the good old days. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, it is, it is changed in the respect that uh, we have three outstanding front runners, uh, Peyton Noe, uh, Sydney Thorvalson and Maya Cochran. So that is our blessing as far as uh, attacking the team uh, challenge. Uh, but it basically comes down to our number four or five uh, taking care of business. Olivia uh, has done a great job of improving this season. A lot of growing up since last year. Uh, our number five, we basically have three people that can fill those shoes uh, which is an advantage if it comes down to number five, but uh, we don't have a clear cut number four or five that could take care of business. With the three front runners we have, if we had a clear cut four and five that were running really, really well, uh, we'd be a very competitive group. But it's been a battle trying to uh, keep everybody healthy because we just don't have the depth that we've had in the past that we could kind of cheat the system if we needed to. And then Sydney, this will be her second race back. Um, yes. she, she ran pretty well at, at uh, conference. I think considering it was her debut, just what are you looking for out of her and maybe the leap she can make from first to second race? Yeah. I mean, Essie, uh, Sydney is, is coming off of a surgery. Um, and fortunately she's recovered from that uh, very, very well. We delayed her opening to be at the SEC meet, and I think she expect, uh, exceeded all expectations. Um, can she, you know, work on improvement? I think that would come with more races. She is the consummate racer. Um, she just always races above and beyond uh, her training. So hopefully she'll, uh, you know, make another step forward and ultimately get her ready for, uh, for the national championships. And Peyton, she's really been your, your number one all year and she ran real well as a freshman too. Just what, what would you say about her season? What are your expectations? Peyton for her? is just an outstanding talent. Um, again, the consummate racer. Um, she is very gifted mentally as far as uh, stepping up to the plate. Uh, she fears no one, but respects everyone. Uh, she'll have her hands full with a couple of Kenyan athletes uh, that are at Tulane now, um, but she loves that challenge. It's got one more. Just, I mean, you, you've this in your first rodeo. I guess it's about your fortieth. Well, if you go back to, to the thirty uh, fifth, yeah, Holly days. Yeah, it's about your, your I don't know fiftieth or something. So whatever. It's it's a lot. I guess I'll put it that way. Um, just what, what what what's your feeling going in with this team under these circumstances? Well, you know, we had a, a real good team conversation this morning at practice about, hey, I'm going to the national championships uh, because I've got three people that are as individuals that will definitely take care of business and earn a spot for the national championships. Uh, number four and five, your season's over if you don't take care of business on on Friday. And so I think it's clearly understood that we need to uh, address it as basically seven people all taking care of their assignment. And if they do that, they'll be in the top two teams and advance the, to the national championship. Sorry, I did. That one. I lose track. So you can run 10 at conference, but it's seven at regional. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just seven. Okay. I I'm good. Thanks. You got it.
Did you have a question for Coach Harder before we switched? Yeah, uh, just a couple real quick. Just mentioning kind of, you know, not having as much depth as usual. How have you seen that kind of push some of the – just the team members in terms of, you know, having to take on more responsibility this season? Yeah, we've asked uh, some of our younger people that, you know, either don't have that experience or, um, you know, are, are coming out of high school. That's a big step to take to try to jump up uh, – to the level of competition, you know, in years past, as, as Bob alluded to, uh, we could get away with murder because we had such talent and such depth that we could play games, so to speak, at the regional meet. Uh, this year, uh, there's enough talent, there's enough universities that are trying to find a niche of success. And uh, we're, we're seeing more and more schools outside of the SEC that are really taking cross country seriously uh, with their finances, their scholarships, et cetera. And uh, a lot of them have chose to dabble with uh, ready-made international athletes. And so they can get uh, really good, really quick. So uh, we've asked some of our young people to have to uh, fulfill an assignment that normally we wouldn't have. We would add upperclassmen uh, ready to to take care of that void. Can you remember a time, obviously, with, with your experience, a team similar to that, an experience similar to that, going into a regional meet like this? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, this is the new assignment for all of us. And uh, there was one year I tried to block it out of my mind where – we only had one individual advanced to the national meet and we had to go to Iowa for that championship. And the host that year was Chris Bucknam. And so uh, I disliked him then. And, 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 you know, that's carried over to, to now. <laughs> that's all I got. Thank you. <laughs> Charter, one quick one for you. Yes, uh, it's rare that you get to run the conference meet and the region meet on the same course. What advantage does that play out having just raced on that for the SEC championships and going back there for the region? I think it's a huge advantage for us. Um, you know, uh, first of all, AM has just done a fabulous job of, of building a cross country course. And we were privileged to have the SEC meet uh, two weeks ago there. So our kids are familiar with how the, uh, the how it lays out. How to? Um, in fact, we talked with uh, number four, five, and six today about the idea of not starting out too fast because I think our adrenaline flow uh, at the SEC meet got a got a hold of us uh, a little early in that race, and unfortunately, um, we were able to get some things done that we needed to get done, but it could have been a much better outcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. If we can we'll switch over. That. Friday. Okay. Sure. Hey, hey, Chris, how you doing? Good. Um, you, you guys uh, do have a pretty powerful team. Are you going to rest some guys or could you, you know what your lineup is yet? Uh, we're, we're getting pretty close. We have one more um, kind of moderate workout today uh, out at the cross country course this afternoon. I know Lance and their group go in the morning. I go in the afternoon. Um, so we'll make, I'll make my final decision, um, after the workout and talk to the team a little bit, but I think it's safe to say, Bob, that we will be resting a couple guys, um, um, uh, going into this race, um, just to, just to, um, you know, um, take the edge off a little bit on, on a couple of them. Yeah, I guess, well, and you guys are, I guess you're still ranked third, but. I know you. If you're in the top ten, you probably feel like you got to shot that national title, but you got to get there. Obviously, you have to yeah, have a. Yeah, a yeah. You have to you have to do your due diligence in the regional. Um, just w w w when you're ranked that high and and you're pretty loaded when experienced and talent, how how do you approach a regional meet? Um, uh, try not to get ahead of ourselves to next week, um, in Madison. And, you know and that is just keep a lid on these guys. Keep a lid on on on. Hey, let's let's don't wish our life away and and, and think about Madison. We have to think about what we're doing uh, each and every single day. I told those guys uh, the week before the SEC meet that the championship season has begun. 
And it started a, even a week before the SEC meet. And so everything that we do, uh, Bob, has to be deliberate, whether what you eat, how you sleep, you know, how you organize your studies, uh, everything, everything uh, is in play the week before the SEC meet. And so we're in this mode right now, and it's just my job as a coach to remind them that, hey, get keep a lid on this stuff. We're excited about uh, the possibility um, um, in Madison about, you know, racing um, uh, and competing for a national title. Um, but we've we've got to take care of business and we got to not even think about Friday. We got to think about today. OK, and then we got to think about tomorrow when we travel. And then we got to think about um, Thursday when we pre-meet. And then we work, then we focus in on the on the regional meet. So that's where my mind is at. And that's where my head is at. And I hope I can, you know, uh, relay that to our guys. I've been trying to do that. You guys have had a nice season. I mean, obviously you won the SEC title and and uh, did real well up in Madison at the pre-nationals and have run well at other meets. Just how good do you feel about the season that you guys put together and just the way that the team has kind of taken every step of the way, the, the way you'd like them to, I, I assume. Right. I, I'm feeling good, Bob, up and up until today. And I'll see how happy I am after the, after the session that we have this afternoon and I'll let them know if I'm not happy, but I'm really pleased with um, you know how how this team has 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 gelled and come together. Um, I guess no other. I don't use the word culture. You know, uh, obviously we feel like we have a a good one that encompasses many years. Um, uh, but you know, you can get off kilter with a different vibe with the team individually with different group, and you know, you look at you know um, the new. Play, the new players that we brought in, the new runners that we brought in, you're always a little bit nervous about, about gelling, but this team is really, uh, they, they enjoy being with each other. They enjoy practicing, um, um, you know, so I, I'm really pleased with that part of it. And that's resulted in, you know, a good, a good championship uh, result at the SEC meet. And now, um, you know, we're, Hope that we take take care of business uh, one day at a time. But What's please, that, please. Yeah, what does that say about your depth that you can probably hold out some guys and still have a good showing at regionals? I mean, that's you know that's the name of the game is to is to you know um, you know have good guys behind your good guys. Okay, so that really is important in practice that um, that you know we that we have a real good group of, of eight to 10 athletes that can basically do the same workout at the same speed and, 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 and run together. And there's obviously we get spread out a little bit sometimes in a workout here or there, depending on how a guy feels or what have you. But I know that, you know, what we, we try to do is make sure that we have a good group. You want to gravitate to excellence. You want to gravitate to the, to the, the very best guy on your team. And so I do feel that the sixth, seventh, eighth, even the ninth and tenth, uh, gra trying to gravitate to the front half of our team, and that's important each and every day. And it's it's not so much competition in practice because I don't want to race in practice. I don't want to prove our fitness in practice, but I want to gain fitness and I want to do that. And, and so it's important that that we have a close knit group talent wise. And this year it, it happens that we've got seven, eight, nine guys that are, that are, are really good. And, and so it's an advantage every, every single day. It's got one more kind of following up on what Sean asked uh, Lance, you know, uh, eight days ago or whatever week, what, what was it? How many days have it been since you guys were in conference? Has it been eight days? No, or it was on uh, November one. It was on November one when okay. they ran. Okay, so so it would have been twelve days or so. Yeah. But by the time you run, um, but you're on the course. You obviously are familiar with it. You've just had success there, so I'm sure mentally it's a good place. Just to, how do you feel about running where you just just won an SEC title? I think it's really good. Um, you know, I, I, the thing I like most about it is that you know um, it's a short trip down to College Station. So it's just a, a hop, skip, and a jump to get there. It's not like 
uh, you know, we're going to someplace like Gainesville or Columbia, Missouri, or someplace uh, Lexington, someplace that's a little bit, you know, more complicated. You got to fly through, you know, other places. And so what I like most about it, Bob, is that it's, it's, I, I don't want to jinx myself, but it's, it, it's easy travel to get there. We're not on a plane very long and we're not sitting around in airports and stuff. So it's a, it's, that's what I like most. Secondly, the course itself that you're referring to as well. Um, yeah, it's um, uh, it's a course we're very familiar with. We've had success on. Uh, it looks like it's going to be fairly dry, which is good. Um, and, and so, you know, there are places where we're running on dirt. And if it was if it was um, if it was rain, it'd be a muddy mess. So it looks like we have dry conditions and, you know, we can wear the type of footwear we want to wear and, and uh, you know, be ready um, uh, for the next step afterwards. I'm good. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Jacob, do you have a question? Yeah. Hey, Coach. First of all, do you have any uh, recollection of that Iowa meet that uh, Coach Harder was talking about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, we we uh, we over at, at Northern Iowa. We overstepped our bounds trying to put that meat on. So um, I, I don't want to bring it up very much because Coach Case in the next office, um, we basically set that course up ourselves. So uh, we didn't have quite the event set up status that we have here. So it's a bad memory, uh, but we pulled it off. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it, and it was 70 degrees one day and literally uh maybe a 20 below windshield the next so <laughs> it was it was brutal i know it's the it's the same course does anything change preparation wise right you got it's 10k right uh this friday versus 8k sec is the same sort of deal with the same course preparation wise yeah i mean but but jake you just said the, the main thing and that is we go to 8 to 10k so it is our first 10k and and so that doesn't sound like much, right? It's just, it's an extra mile, uh, uh, but um, you know, you just we just we try to play it down. It's like it's like the weather, okay? You 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 make an issue of it, and it becomes an issue. And so we basically have have geared our training uh, towards a ten k race. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that, we'll see how that goes, but that's really the main thing is the distance and just being out there on the course longer. And, um, you know, when you're out there, it's like a football game when you're out there, you know, com competing, um, the longer you're out there, the, the, the more shit can happen. Right. And so, and so it's kind of like uh okay the more stuff can happen so you know you just you just somebody rolls an ankle or does something like you know that's that's where that all comes in so we just we just need to you know um uh, be smart and and be attentive and understand like i was telling bob nothing's easy and this might look easy and but nothing's easy and we have to mind our P's and Q's. We got to do, we got to do things right in order to get through this. Yeah. You mentioned to Bob, uh, you know, telling the team to not get ahead of themselves, managing depth and all that stuff. You know, what have you learned over the years with that? Is it every team's kind of different in terms of implementing that mindset? What have you learned in kind of being able to handle staying grounded when you guys have the depth that you do and approaching regional meets from a perspective like this? Just understanding, um, you know, to keep the guys in the moment where, you know, wherever our feet are, that's where our head has to be. And it can't be anywhere else. That's what I've learned, you know, over over the years is is not to um, count your chickens before they hatch. And, and it's literally, um, it sounds simple, but it's not because these guys are geared up uh, for for big races, and we have to treat this as a big race, you know, without going to the well. And so that's hard to do. Whenever you, we can say it's going to be, you know, an easy run. That we're we're an easy lock, and and without something drastic, you know, something egregious going wrong, it is okay. But when you put the uniform on and you line up, it's not practice. 
and you can say it is or whatever, but it's not. So it's just, hey, we've been through. I've got a veteran team. They've we've done this before, um, and I, and I will say that you know it remains to be seen resting guys whether that helps or not uh, because I, I, I'm probably batting below 500 or right at 500. It just depends on the individual on that day, Jacob, if, if it all works out. So um, a lot of, as a lot of luck, a lot of things have to go your way uh, to, to, to pull off the big cojones. So, you know, until that time, you know, we've got to understand nothing's easy. 